Starship 20 rolls its fat ass out to the pad and sits on Booster 4's face to set a world record. 420. Starlink's customer base keeps growing as its network prepares to receive 60 more satellites. SpaceX is busy training Dragon space passengers of the future, and Netflix gets in on the action. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Tuesday's episode, we watched SpaceX transport Booster 4 down Highway 4, no relation, to the launch site. And it wasn't too long after that it was hoisted up and suspended in air to be placed on the orbital launch pad. Elon must be super stoked about the insane progress. I've never seen him share so many pictures and videos before. And I'd personally like to take a second here and appreciate the organized beauty of those 29 Raptor engines. My OCD appreciates the numbers facing out, like the labels in my spice cabinet. I can also appreciate how difficult it is to fit dozens of Raptors within a fairly tight circumference. Granted, his work may look a little more organized, but mine has two additional engines thanks to Elon's overbearing flexibility. Yes, I think that oxymoron describes what he put me through perfectly. Our new contributor, Nick Lee, now my Nick number two, sent me this video of the booster resting safely on the launch table. First time it's ever been used. And yes, Elon did confirm with Tim Dodd that these grid fins will indeed remain extended in flight. Their simulation showed it shouldn't be an issue, which boggles my mind, Elon has finally hacked physics and made it completely optional now. He's the one. You can see the matrix, can't you? Elon also gave us some more insights on what future booster catches could look like when responding to Starship artist Eric X's animation. Very close to real, arms are able to move during descent to match exact booster position. Catch point is off to the side in case catch fails. Don't want to hit the launch mount. Booster is then transferred back to the launch mount for next flight, designed to have less than an hour turnaround. Just when you thought the sex toy you built for your wife in the garage was impressive. <laughs> Am I right, fellas? That's fantastic. Something, isn't it? 100 bucks all in. Meanwhile, SN20's two halves were moved to the high bay and mated. Of course, Raptor Vax were feeling left out and wanted in on the mating action. So the party was turned into an orgy and all six engines were inserted under the skirt. Heat shield tiles continued to be placed at random on the body of the vehicle, rolling out like Michael Scott placed everyone himself. First, pop the hood. Then you take these bad boys and clip them anywhere on the engine. On the morning of August 5th, Starship left to join its booster at the launch pad, GSE tank in tow. Like an awkward date to Boca Chica Beach. Been there. But both arrived safely and the tank was immediately shelled. Check out this gnarly aerial photo from RGV. And don't worry, Elon told Nick number one that SN20's remaining tiles will catch up. Some are unique shapes and require machining. The goal was to stack Starship on the booster on the orbital pad by the end of the day, so her nose was promptly hooked up to a crane and everyone was on standby to make it so. Winds were too high, looks like wind speed will be low enough to stack early tomorrow morning. Once the orbital launch and integration tower is operational, winds will rarely be an issue. But you know what? We're counting it. Deadline met, mission accomplished, great job team. This morning, they officially completed the job when Starship was lifted up and placed gently onto its first stage for the first time in history. Dream come true. Arise. Arise. And let's just take a second and really soak in the moment here. This is something we've all been waiting years for. All right, launch it already. When asked by Michael Sheets from CNBC, what's next after de-stacking, Elon replied four significant items. Final heat shield tiles for ship, thermal protection of booster engines, round propellant storage tanks, and QD arm for ship. Two weeks. Really quick, we didn't discuss this publicly yet because the news broke literally, literally, two minutes after my final twatter check before publishing last Friday's sewed. And I'm sure there's at least one of you who haven't heard, but the Government Accountability Office did reject Blue Origin and Dynetic's appeal of SpaceX's human landing system win. Basically, in short, because NASA has the right to award a single contract if they so choose, which they did. So SpaceX is now free to start using its almost 3 billion spoils to build Lunar Starship. Elon's pumped about it. Do it! Moving on to other SpaceX news meow. SpaceX gave an update on Starlink growth in a call with the FCC last week. Last we heard a couple months back, they were serving 50,000 Starlink customers, but have already almost doubled that number. Now providing service to 90,000 plus one additional country. Service and stability will continue to improve as more satellites join the network and reach their final orbits. The next flock will be flying on a Falcon 9 rocket from Vandenberg on the west coast to a polar orbit, but the August 10th date has been scrubbed. The next flight on the books as of now is a Cargo Dragon resupply mission to the space station on the 28th. 
Yesterday, Planet announced they had signed a multi-year launch rideshare agreement with SpaceX, solidifying them as their go-to launch provider through the end of 2025. The first planned launch under this agreement will deploy 44 sleeper devs in December. SpaceX is currently training 20 astronauts from around the world for Dragon missions. NASA's Crew-3 astronauts underwent emergency preparedness training last week, and the crew of Inspiration4 stopped by to sign their names on their sooty booster. Netflix announced their first near real-time documentary that will be covering the Inspiration4 event, which will premiere in five parts leading up to and following the mission. <sighs> cool. And lastly, Elon announced to those who are curious about Tesla and SpaceX and his general goings on, that Walter Isaacson is writing his biography and is currently shadowing the Musk man and has been for several days. Now somebody just needs to start a petition to have Elon narrate the audiobook. Today, Junior! Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And of course, my sincerest appreciation to all my eccentric members and patrons supporting the show. I'm heading into surgery next week, so I'll see you right back here for our next episode on August 20th. Until that time, Godspeed.